I've stood right here and I've spoken about how Tennesseans are confused about this process. I want to amplify something for those who may not have caught my remarks. Tennesseans aren't talking about process or pay-fors. They don't follow the Senate rules. What they're confused about is why my Democratic colleagues are in such a rush to spend money we do not have on projects the American people never asked for. Now, I don't want my Democratic colleagues to make a mistake and accuse Tennesseans of not caring about infrastructure. They couldn't be further from the truth on that one. Tennessee is a logistic state. We're roads, bridges, rivers, runways, railways. So believe me when I say Tennesseans care about infrastructure. They are ready to invest in infrastructure. Indeed, the Surface Transportation Bill we passed out of commerce, science, and transportation. They like that. But cobbling together a trillion dollar vehicle for campaign promises and calling it infrastructure is not something that passes muster with them. Several of my Republican colleagues who were allowed to negotiate this bill have emphasized that this is a bipartisan compromise. We thank them for their efforts. They want us to understand that it's not a perfect bill. No bill is ever perfect. And all of that is true. We understand that. We appreciate the efforts that have gone into this. But as my colleague from Kansas said, it's not the compromise that's the problem. It's not the efforts. We appreciate those. It is the fact that this is a bill that is too expensive to afford. The minority leader said it best a few months ago when he compared this bill to a Trojan horse. It looks like one thing, but it's hiding something you don't want getting past the front door. For months, the Democratic Party has been very public about their intentions for the bill. The word infrastructure no longer has any meaning when it comes out of their mouths because everything has been infrastructure at some point. Child care, for a while until it took a back seat to court packing. Now climate action is infrastructure. Back home, we deal in truth and consequences. Tennesseans have spent the past few days looking at everything hunkered down inside this package. And they know it's not all about infrastructure investment. I am talking to county mayors. I'm talking to state reps. I'm talking to state senators. So they're concerned about 25% of the bill being for infrastructure and the rest other projects. I've spoken numerous times about the ways President Biden and his faithful lieutenants in Congress have tried to diminish freedom in the name of progress, but I am compelled to remind my colleagues once again that the decision to increase government spending is a decision to increase government involvement and eventually government control. You cannot have the one without getting the other two. This isn't investing in the future. If anything, this pattern of reckless spending will ensure that the version of the American dream so many of us have enjoyed disappears before our youngest generations are old enough to sign the dotted line on their driver's license application. My Democratic colleagues aren't paving the way to prosperity for our children and grandchildren with this type of spending. They're building the gateway to socialism, and this bill can be seen as a down payment. Later this week, if all goes according to plan for my colleague from New York, we'll take a vote on a budget that's going to make the American people think they got a discount on the infrastructure package. It's another day, another fight over a multi-trillion dollar spending spree that defies common sense and rejects all notions of accountability. If the infrastructure bill was the down payment for that gateway to socialism, this budget rips the gates off the hinges and invites the big spenders and central planners to roll right on through. For the low price of three and a half trillion dollars, they'll have it all. 
a laundry list of incentives for government dependency, a foot in the door to our homes and families, and an excuse to seize power and centralize it right here in Washington. My Democratic colleagues really enjoy using the words free and universal to describe their government handouts. We have universal pre-K, tuition-free community college, universal health care, and even a free path to citizenship for illegal immigrants. The American people see this for what it is, though. It's bait. In exchange for your freedom and your autonomy and all your hopes and dreams, you too can become a client of the state. You too can live the life of Julia as depicted in the roundly panned cartoon the Obama administration created. The left always signals where they're headed, and for them, this is their goal, their utopia. Total control from daylight to dark, 24 hours a day, seven days a week for the rest of your life. Our public debt is set to hit $45 trillion by 2031. $45 trillion dollars. Deficits are on track to hit 1.8 trillion dollars. Yes, indeed, that's every year. And no budget gimmick on the books can change that. President Reagan's warning about the fragile nature of freedom rings especially true after hearing those numbers. Here's what he said. Freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. It has to be fought for and defended by each generation. What does that mean? It means we, each of us, individually, collectively, together, have a duty to future generations to pull out of this skid before we tip the scales away from freedom and toward levels of government dependency and control you can't unravel after fixing a four-year mistake. I yield the floor.